My name is Aurora. I'm a mechanical engineer. I've taught at a university. I'm an astronomer. I started flying airplanes when I was young. I worked for NASA when I was attending both high school and college at the same time. I am a total overachiever because when I was going to college, um, while I was also going to high school, I actually was sneaking in and taking extra math classes. And when I was a freshman at the university, when I um, for the first year that I attended as a full-time student at the university, I actually didn't have to take any math classes at all, uh, which is impressive considering my um, that degree was in mechanical engineering, which you need all kinds of math for, but I had already taken them all because I was so crazy wild about the subject. So I am going to talk to you today about how to do real math when you don't have a paper, a calculator, or pencil handy at all. And um, we're going to set the, the framework and set the foundation for how to do some of the uh, lessons I'm going to share with you a little further down the road. Now how many times have you needed to calculate something, say 67 times 5? and you didn't have a calculator handy. You know, your iPhone's dead and you didn't have paper and pencil and even if you did, you're just too lazy to figure it out anyway. But you want to know if you've got enough money in your pocket to cover uh, what you want to buy. Um, so there's a lot of what, uh, a lot of math comes up in everyday life that we're just not prepared for simply because we didn't practice it when we were younger. For example, if I gave you the problem to write down on paper and I said, tell me what 10 times 3 is, could you do it like that? Well, sure, you'd say it's 30. Why? Because it's easy and you've practiced your times tables, right? But if I give you something harder, like 19 times 67, you might stop and think, uh, hang on, I need a, a paper, because that's what you're trained to do. So we are going to set the foundation so you won't need to rely on paper and pencil anymore, whether you're counting calories, figuring out how much, um, what your gas mileage is, figuring out you know, anything that you'd need to know in everyday real life, how much a cup of coffee is, what the change is back from a $10 bill to make sure you're not getting ripped off, or make sure that it's not happening the other way so you can give it back if you need to. But um, the point is, is to make math much more useful than maybe you've been conditioned to in the past. Okay, so the first lesson for us today then, in order to lay that foundation, is learning how to do math from left to right. And here's what I mean by that. Normally when we do a math problem, we say we're doing a problem like 15 plus 5. Now you probably already know the answer is 20, but pretend that you didn't. So 15 plus 5, to figure that out, first thing you would need to do on paper is you'd write it out, right? And that takes some time. And then after that, you'd start with the ones or the tens. You'd actually start with the ones, right? You'd say 5 plus 5. Oh, wait, there's a carry coming in. Okay, now I'm going to write the 0 down. And you've already gone, what, 10, 15, 20 seconds into the problem, and you still don't have the answer. So what I'm going to suggest for mental math, and it's way easier, is the first thing you want to do is get a ballpark idea of what your answer is going to be. It, is it 100 bucks? Is it 1,000 bucks? How many people do you expect to fit into this section of the stadium? 10,000 people or just 1,000? You know, the order of magnitude of your problem and kind of ballparking it is really important. It's much more important than figuring out what the last digit is on your number. So how we're going to do that is we're going to start with the other side. We are going to start with the highest number. So uh, 15 plus 5, you would say, okay, my answer is going to be more than 15, but I see it's not more than 25, right, because you're adding a single digit to it. So my answer is going to be in the tens, and it's probably going to be right around 20. And you take a look, and in fact, it, it, it is 20. So when you do larger numbers like 389 plus 116, well, what's the ballpark for that? If you start to add your numbers together, 389 is close to 400, 116 is close to 100, 400 plus 100 is about 500. You should get an answer right around 500. This is great because if you start to write 800 by accident, you know you've overshot too much. So it's a great way to check your answers. Okay, let me show you some sample problems, and I'm going to walk you through this process step by step, and I'm going to show you how to break it down, and we're going to do the, the hundreds first, if there are hundreds, and then the tens, and then the ones, and you do them one step at a time, and we're going to go really painstakingly slow, so you get the hang of this, and then you can go as fast as you want with some practice problems. Okay, let's do this now. So first, let's start with an easy addition problem. Suppose we want to take... 750 plus 26, okay? 
So if you say it in your head, or you say it out loud, which I think is better, you say 750 plus 26. There's no hundreds here. So you can already start to say your answer even before you figured it out completely. So you'd say 700, and then you're going to add the tens, which is 5 plus 2, which is 7, and then you're going to add the ones, which is 6. 750 plus 26 is 776. Okay, let's try another one. Suppose I give you a problem like 777 plus 19. How would you do that? Well, you'd start to say 777 plus 19. Now, 19, what is 19 close to? It's close to 20, isn't it? So I would actually rewrite this to be 19 is also known as 20 minus 1. Now that's a much easier problem, isn't it? Usually you can rewrite hard addition problems into simple subtraction problems. So what are we going to do first? We're going to take 777 and we're going to add 20. And we're going to get 790 minus 1. The final result is 789. Okay, let's try another example. Suppose we have 893, and we're going to add to that 396. Okay, so that's kind of a hard addition problem, isn't it? But let's see if we can make it easier. 893 plus 396. 396 is like 400 minus 4, isn't it? So, what's 893 plus 400? That's pretty easy, isn't it? It's 1,293 minus 4 gives a final result of 11, I'm sorry, 1,289. You see how much easier that is to do? It is useful to know how to do this longhand on paper, but when you don't have paper or pencil, this is a much easier problem to do especially in your head. Okay, let's try another one. And this one's going to be subtraction. Suppose I ask you, what's 100 minus 75? Could you do that quickly? Sure you can. You're going to tell me that the answer is 25, aren't you? Okay, if I have three quarters, or I'm sorry, if I have a dollar and something costs three quarters, I am left with one quarter, right? Okay, so Knowing what the complement is is really useful, especially when you do three-digit addition or subtraction problems. Let me show you what I mean. How far is this number from 100? Can you do it quickly? Did you get this? I hope so. Okay, let's try another one. How far is this number from 100? you should get 24. If you can't do it quickly, think about it this way. And to find the complement to 100, how, much, how far it is, is all you need to do is add, enough, add a digit to make this first tens digit turn to 9 and this digit turn to 0. Turn to 10, I should say, not 0. <laughs> okay? So if I asked you how far this one is for 100, what would you add to 3 to make it a 9? You'd add a 6, right? What would you add to a 3 to make it a 10? Well, you'd add 7. This one is 67 away from 100. Okay, try another one. How far is this one from 100? Okay, what would you add to make the 2 turn into a 9? Would you add a 7? How about the 1 to make it a 10? Okay, so this one is 79. Good. Let's try one more. How far is 88 from 100? What would you add to 8 to make it a 9? A 1, right? How about what would you add to an 8 to make it a 10? A 2. Okay, so knowing complements is really going to help, especially when we do these types of problems. If I t ask you, what's 256 minus 49? What would you say? 
Well, it's kind of a hard subtraction problem. I mean, there's carries involved. and So let's see if we can make it an easy addition problem. So I've got 256 minus 49 is really close to 50, right? It's 50 minus 1. So we're going to say minus 50 plus 1. Okay, so what's 256 minus 50? Can you do that quickly? Yeah, did you get 206 plus 1? So you should get 207. How about 318 minus 57? How would you do that one? 57 is really close to 60, right? So it's 60 minus 3. So 318 minus 60. Ooh, that might still be too hard, huh? Well, let's see if we can do it. 318 minus 60. So does this still look a little hard? Think of it this way. What's 31 minus 6? Just go ahead and cancel that part of the problem out. 31 minus 6, can you do that in your head? Did you get 25? And then you drop this number down, so I have 258. Okay, but I took away too much, didn't I? I took away 60, I should have only taken away 57. So whatever you take away, you've got to bring back. So I'm going to add 3 to get 260, I'm sorry, yeah, 261. Yep, there we go. So have you ever been at the store and all you've got is a $10 bill? And you're purchasing a candy bar. It's a really good candy bar because it costs $3.41. What's your change? That is a good question because you want to make sure that you get the right amount of change, not too much and not too little. So how would you do this one in your head without all this carrying and borrowing going on? Okay, so basically what we're doing is we are finding the complement of 341. We're finding how far that number is from 1,000. So how do we do that? There's a really easy way. Do you see the 3? How far is the 3 from 9? It's 6, right? Okay, how much do you have to add to a 4 to get to 9? 5. How much do you have to add to a 1 to get 10? Okay, so my change is $6 and 59 cents. Let's try another one. Suppose you still got a $10 bill, but now you've got two candy bars and they're both different prices. So you actually paid $6.78. What's your change from $10 bills for, from a $10 bill for $6.78 uh, worth of $6.78 worth of candy? Okay, what do you add to the 6 to get to a 9? So you can already start to say your answer even if you haven't filled out the whole thing. And people think you're doing your math even faster when you do this, which is great. Okay, so I would say it's $3.22 because 3 plus 6 gives you 9, 7 plus 2 gives you 9, and 8 plus 2 gives you 10. Easy as that. Okay, and let's suppose you had one more friend that came along and they picked out something else. So your total bill is now $8.39. And you pay with $10. What would you do? Well, you'd simply say that your change was $1.61. Because again, 8 plus 1 is 9, 3 plus 6 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. Now, of course, if you pay $9.90 and you pay with a $10 bill, what's your change? That's already a 9, so that's going to be a 0. That's already a 9. Whoops. <laughs> and uh, this is a zero, so that's going to be 10 cents. So we're going to cross that zero out and put 10. So you have a dime left. Okay, just like that. So again, if your last digit is a zero, you can go ahead and write a zero, and you'll need to bump up the next number. Okay, great. Do you see how useful that's going to be? Okay. So if I give you a problem like this, if I say, what's 800 plus 336, could you tell me the answer? Yeah, it's 1136. You did that quickly in your head, didn't you? What if I make it harder? What if I say 840 
plus 336. Could you still do it? And you didn't know this top part? <laughs> Let's see. 800 plus 1100, I'm sorry, 800 plus 300, and I can already look at the tens and see I'm not going to have any carries, so I can say with confidence that my answer is 1100, even before I finish with the tens and the ones. So I know it's going to be 1176, okay, because I'm adding the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. See, when you do this on paper, you start with the ones, then the tens, then the hundreds, right? And so in the first step, all I can say is, well, my answer ends in six. But that's not nearly as useful as knowing the ballpark figure of about how big my answer is going to be. So I know by looking at the most significant digits here, I can say, well, my answer is going to be around 1,100. And that gives me a good idea to make sure. So if I accidentally write 11,000, I know that I'm off. And so uh, when we do it in our head, we always deal with the most important numbers first. OK, great. Let's add one more digit. OK, so we're going to cover those up. And we're going to say, all right, 845 plus 336. Now, how much is that? OK, so 845 plus 336. 845 plus 336. 845, this looks like 850 to me. OK, and we're going to minus 5, right? So 850 plus 330, here, I'll write it down here so it's easier. 336, OK? Do it from left to right. OK, so I've got 1186. But remember, we added five more too many, right? Because we bumped it up. Now we have to bump it back down. So my answer is 1181. So did that make a little bit of sense, or is it starting to make a lot more sense now? Probably starting to make a lot more sense, and I'm glad, because the more you practice this, the faster you're going to get at it, and you'll be able to run circles around not just your parents, but your math teachers as well. <laughs> so don't forget, when you do it on paper, it's definitely advantageous to do it. It's a good idea to do it from right to left. So do it the way you've been doing it, starting with the ones, then with the tens, and on up. But when you do it in mentally, always start from the left and work to the right. And by the way, you'll get good at this, and kids are especially really good at this. Grown-ups take a little bit longer to get used to this because they're just used to doing it the other way so much more. But it's possible. You can totally run circles around your kids if you really want to. Um, so what you want to do is as you're working on a math paper, suppose you're doing like a math quiz or math test, also do it mentally. So you're going from right to left at the same time your brain is going from left to right. And you'll be able to catch any mistakes as you go along. And I'm sharing this with you because that's what I used to do when I was in school. I would do the math paper and I would do it um, uh, with my paper from right to left, but my mind was already doing it from left to right and I would still be the first one done. Um, in my math uh, in my math classes, and I was always 100% right. That's why I was the captain of the math team <laughs> when I was in school. Sadly, not the soccer team, but um, hey, we all have our priorities. Anyway, so go have fun with this.